Just a small tip today, I'm going to quickly show you how you can work with some audio to load audio into your timeline and actually render out audio into your QuickTime movies which you render potentially out of cinema. Um, those who've worked with MoGraph, they'll know that there is a sound effector we have up here, which if you choose a sound file, you, you'll hear it play back. But what about those either without MoGraph or those who want to actually render audio into their output files, uh, even if it's just for a quick test? Well, uh, what you need to do is attach a soundtrack to any object you like. You don't actually need anything in anything specific any object will do. So I will show you this with a null object. And what you need to do is open up your timeline window. In your timeline, what you won't see in all likelihood is that null object. This is because the, the timeline is set to automatic mode. It will only show us things which are already animated. So what I have to do is override this. And I can do this by dragging my null object into the timeline and letting go. Okay, here's our null. I'm going to right click on this or Apple click if you're lacking a right mouse button. And it's listed under special tracks. Under special tracks we have a, a sound track you can add. So click this and down in the corner here's your settings. You'll see there's a little slot where you can actually select a sound file. Now, in terms of file formats, you're looking at, ideally, a WAV file, WAV, or an AIF file. These are both uncompressed audio, which means Cinema will be able to play them back and scrub through them very quickly. You can use compressed formats, like MP3s, but they're going to require a bit more processing power, so ideally try to convert your audio files to something uncompressed. Anyway, over here, click the button and choose a sound file. Let's see, I have some laying around in a folder called music. So just grab any old audio file. And that's it. It will now be applied to your project. If you want to see the waveform, hit this little teeny tiny arrow next to the, the file name you've chosen. And there you go. So now you can get a visual guide to where the beats are, the loud parts, and if you press play, it should play back the audio for you. Now, what you may need to do depends on your version. If you don't hear any audio, if it's mute, quickly check under your animate menu, your animation menu. And just double check that the play sound option is actually highlighted. Otherwise, it, well, otherwise you might get no sound at all. But the advantage of doing this over using the MoGraph sound effect, well, have a look in your render settings. In your render settings, you'll find under the Save tab, there is actually an option called Include Sound. Now, you may have seen it a hundred times, a thousand times, not really realize what it does. But if you use this method of adding sound to your, to your project, the Include Sound option will actually render that audio into your output file. So, so long as I output an actual range, let's just render 90 frames, and so long as you actually save it to a format which supports it, so you know, obviously TIFFs and JPEGs aren't going to support sound, go for a QuickTime Movie or AVI if you've got that and you want it. But as long as you've chosen an actual movie format, then when you render it, I'm just going to throw this onto my desktop, when you render, just going to get some darkness here, but uh, you'll actually have the audio in there. So if I scrub my slider here, I will actually have the audio. And of course, if I grab the file I've just rendered, I should have all the sound in there. Perfect. Okay, so that it generally just helps you with your tests. I wouldn't ever render a final animation out as a QuickTime movie, just for safety's sake. Um, yeah, if you if your files if your rendering stops, at least with an image sequence, you've got some of the files rendered. You can continue from where you left off. But for all your test renders, which you'll probably be rendering straight into a QuickTime file, it's quite useful. It's it's quite a nice little thing. Okay, hopefully that will save you uh, a bit of time, not having to go through all the steps of sticking your video with your audio together just to see if the if the timing works. Okay, go watch some more videos. There's a few.